Lord Vader. Rise. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're going to talk about 5v5 defensive teams now. It's an important aspect to this. Don't miss my 5v5 offensive teams video, which is released. I think I'm going to just release them at the exact same time, just concurrently. We'll see which thing hits the feeds faster or better or whatever first. Uh, so my offense teams, I, I put a lot of extra teams on that just because uh, on offense you need a lot of flexibility. On defense, however, I mean you do need more flexibility, Kind like you need to be able to swap teams out here and there. And I'm going to show you guys what I do with my Galactic Legends because a lot of people have wanted Galactic Legends to be included on these videos and I'm like, well, I, I hope you have all the GLs because I, I mix and match pretty pretty relentlessly. I changed my things out quite a bit, but we're going to talk about all the different Omicrons I have, all the all the different things. And then if you want a more down to earth video that that's going to going to show all of the teams that I use for my alternate account, which only has two Galactic Legends and it's 7.5 million. I guess it's 7.6 now, but uh, that'll that'll be released probably sometime tomorrow. It'll be an all-in-one video, so it'll be, you know, 40-ish minutes, I'm sure, as I'm going through all the things. And it's a whole mess. 5v5, there's a lot of team options. There's a lot of a lot of different weird variations for, even for teams, uh, even for comps that are rosters that don't have a lot of Galactic Legends. And especially that one, which has to do a lot of weird stuff. In order, to, in order to compete, you guys can see how I plan on beating Lord Vader, in fact, in 5v5 for that for that account. It's, it's, uh, it's dicey as hell, folks. That being said, let's get to the actual video at, at hand. Let's do it. Whoa, madness. Lord Vader's on the top. Who'd have guessed that? Now, Lord Vader has uh, the certain... I mean, we got to talk about... We'll have to discuss a little bit about Krons here, folks. That's just how it has to be. I mean, there, there's no point in denying that Krons are going to be part of part of this set. Uh, so for set four is just crazy with all the dodge, all of the, uh, you know... All of the accuracy arrows, everything that we're going to have to be placing. I mean... It's, it's just part of the total planning. So, uh, Lord Vader, this, this has a few different options here, folks. Like, the fast ult is less good in 5v5, in my opinion. They finally fixed the 4% mastery cron, which is good. That's probably the best one, though. The, the really tanky version of Lord Vader is also good. One thing that I plan on trying to use, at least a little bit, is the First Order Type Pilot bonus turn Omicron, if you have it. And if you don't, then don't put Type Pilot on this team. But uh, the the thing is, you can you can kind of mix and match. Like if you put a really fast Gideon, he's going to be plus forty speed. My Gideon is like what three hundred seventy eight or something. It's not like the fastest or anything, but he is pretty quick. So he's going to end up being in the four you know twenty ish range, uh, which is going to make it really tough for a lot of different counters to work on it. Plus, if he gets his turn early enough, he's going to he's going to just be messing with people because he can only do half damage to you. So this team, I like this comp. If you can swap one of them out for Thrawn, that's probably good. You really want Royal Guard here as one of them. In five v five, no excuse not to have Royal Guard. You can also do something like if if you really really want Maul on offense which you can break him off, then, I don't know, Lord Vader might be a better uh, option to do undersized wins on offense for you. Though, I, it, it's just a tricky thing, guys. Maul with Lord Vader, gonna be monsters. I'm gonna try real hard to get Maul up to Relic 9 before lock. That's, that's something I would really like to do. Maul at Relic 9, man. Good stuff. Gideon also should get to Relic 7 if I'm going to use him with Lord Vader much, to be honest. Alright, Qui-Gon team. I know that this is such an expensive team, guys, but it's hard to print wins as much as this team just generates them. It's, it is crazy. Without the turn meter Kron uh, and without the extra damage, it's probably going to be a little less awesome, but it really doesn't. It's not going to, it's not going to be re that far reduced in productivity, guys. This team gets all the wins. If someone wants to use a Galactic Legend on them, they have to be careful 
not to use the wrong Galactic Legend because sometimes, or try to undersize it too much, because this team will still kill a Galactic Legend even though Qui-Gon's stuff is negated. Kiedi Mundi just puts them on his shoulders and just destroys them. The mechanics of this team work really nicely together. You just have to have them all pretty dang quick. You guys can look at my profile if you want to see how to mod them and everything. Uh, specifically these three. The turn order and the specific speeds are pretty important in fact fact, guys. Uh, at least, yeah, you, you need to have a certain speed threshold. Now, uh, I put them, I put that here right next to this Kenobi team, because the Kenobi team takes a pretty big hit, right, without having, without having Snips, without having General Kenobi. So, you want a tank that's Galactic Republic. I tend to like using Clone Wars Chewie just because it's amusing to me to see people fail against Clone Wars Chewie. He actually works pretty well here. Padme works really well. This is kind of funny. There's no Jedi on this Kenobi team, actually, but it still works fairly well. I mean, Kenobi and Cat are going to be good anywhere. And, you know, the Padme, Chewie, uh, R2, I mean, all, all of it. This is a pretty good combo. R2 boosts all of their stats. They they do a lot of good stuff. It's it's very beatable by the common Kenobi counters, but it still requires a pretty deep, like... Uh, this, this team doesn't let you down in terms of like, oh, shoot, now CLS beats it. Like, you still have to use one of the standard... Kenobi counters and that right now I mean dash will work on it and stuff too you gotta be cautious but this team this still team still has it where it counts folks um yes it's a lesser version of it it's not gonna beat as many really good teams but right now it's not even the best team out there and even on offense uh, it's gonna struggle against a lot of different teams uh, especially with Ben Solo coming out, Cat and her auto kill is actually like specifically targeted as something that Ben stops cold. Now on offense or on defense, I really like General Skywalker still, even though he gets beat by by Inquisitors. Uh, I mean, eventually we're gonna have to start taking him on offense. Sometimes I guess the thing about him is he just isn't that efficient on offense. Like you're you're pretty much doomed to dropping five banners if you want to take the full team, and if you don't take the full team then it's like well we probably could have countered it with some other team instead so yeah they'll they'll destroy teams that don't allow or that want to revive a lot they'll destroy teams that really get uh you know really mess with you don't try to use skywalker on this qui-gon team at least on not on this build i i had several times several defends with qui-gon against general skywalker teams last season in fact it was uh it's a little bit hilarious, to be honest. And then at some point, people stopped because they could see in the history that there was just a long line and a long trail of tears leading from General Skywalker to that team. So, uh, it was good. All right, Ray on defense. I mean, without the Kron, without all the stuff, I, I don't know. If you can get a really good dodge Kron on this squad, I mean, it could be really obnoxious, to be honest. Um, it can be good. Uh, once Ben is here, he's gonna. This team is gonna be on defense all the time. You're gonna see him on defense all the time. I do like it on offense too. I just, you, I want to put, I wanted a, an even spread of GLs for offense and defense. And I do think this is this team tends to be a better one on defense. Can it be beat by basically all the different Galactic Legends right now? Yes, it absolutely can. Jedi Training Ray does really put the screws to Supreme Leader Kylo, or <laughs> not to, I mean sometimes, but but to Sith Eternal Backpack Emperor is the more common one and this team i mean where, where is ben gonna fit in I, I don't even know like maybe poe is gonna get taken out I'm, I'm not sure on this particular build having a fast fin is actually gonna be really nice for you on defense uh you know it's somewhere in the 340s mine is not even close to that i don't think so i, I don't know if he's gonna be gonna make the cut uh i mean who knows if i'm even gonna use him this season i, I don't know i don't know so commander luke you can get into some really strange builds on defense if you decide to take Luke, and then like you have an Akbar Omicron, and uh, so if you want to get into that, then you can take C3PO and have 3PO go with Sorty, which shuts down the Wampa counter to the Sorty team. However, this this team is still pretty good on defense, even without the cool Datacrons and stuff. This team still does okay. Yes, it gets beat by teams like General Grievous sometimes if you don't have a modded right, or sometimes if you even if you do, uh, you know you want all the relics on them that you can fit on them. Uh, this this team is great on offense too. I, it's kind of in a weird place right now, guys. You can split them up, have have Chewie and Han go with like Dash or Bam or something like that, and have. 
have Chupio go, who knows, he could go with Luke with on an Akbar team, I suppose. Get 3PO go, to go on Sortie. Uh, you, you can do that, guys. Uh, you know, and it works okay. I just, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of weird. You can also maybe take 3PO out and put, like, Cara Dune here if you wanted to, to stop the Iden counter. Uh, though the Iden counter, I guess we'll see. I mean, it, it works. It usually works. It's not as 100% as a lot of people try to make it out to be, however. Now, Malgus, I mean, this is kind of the team that everyone is... I mean, everyone's putting him on defense, at least for one more season while we have the set 3 going on. Uh, set 3 makes him spam his his best special, and right now it's, it's working. I'm very interested to see. I'm going to start studying what teams it kills on offense. Eventually, I'm going to take it on offense, and people will be like, oh, wow, this is cool. The thing is, uh, Malgus is... He's a galactic legend on defense right now. That, that's just how it is. Like, he requires someone to use a galactic legend on. Or, I, I don't know, I've, I've seen Starkiller work. I've seen General Skywalker work. Though I've seen General Skywalker fail a huge percentage of the time as well. Well, next season will be the full, like, or I guess next 5v5 season will be a really interesting transition. Because he'll start having to rely on something other than his overpowered Datacron to make him work well. So, this team is still really good. If you don't have Malgus, then the Darth Revan team will with Talon still can work. Just keep in mind, you're going to need your Darth Revan to be pretty quick, even though Talon makes him pretty quick. Uh, I'm telling you now, this team really does need a little extra speed if it's going to work at all. And honestly, you could keep it on offense if you're going to do that and like try to take out Starkiller teams or something like that instead. Uh, now, this is this is the weird Starkiller team that I kind of referenced in my offense video, which is like... Okay, you can take Mara Jade here if you wanted to as well, the the EP Mara Jade team, and just, just totally, you know, totally rewrite this te this team. This team I want to try on defense, though, something like this. Maybe we'll take Old Ben as lead and put, like, a Dodge Datacron on the, on the team, or we'll just keep Savage here and we'll have a couple of different versions of Taunt and... I don't know, like, we'll have the Revive through Vsys. This is kind of a weird Leftovers team, but I, I want to see how Savage does, because he, with the Omicron, and remember, if you don't have the Omicron, then don't even consider Savage. Just just go throw him in the trash right now if you don't have the, the Omicron. Don't use him. But if you do, he's, he is already ridiculously tanky. If you put him with Starkiller, he gets uh, he gets double his health and protection, and, he's, and if you further debuff your opponents, then they're going to be doing half damage to him. And he's just going to be really tough to kill. I, I want to see. Like, it's still susceptible to, like, the Sith Eternal uh, counter, of course. Like, there's a few different counters that are just going to destroy this. But if this team is taking up a Galactic Legend, then I guess I did something right. Like, I don't know if I don't know how General Grievous would do against it. I, I kind of think that Grievous would struggle because he's going to eat so many debuffs from Grievous. It might really, re might really mess things up. Or maybe Grievous still messes it up. Uh, I think Crew here instead of OG Kylo is going to be a better choice. But uh, when I was making this build, Crew was already taken in a different team. So, uh, you know, you could you could do this. You could put one of the Inquisitors in. Now, he's going to play a pretty minor role, to be honest. But, uh, you know, he could do okay. Now, Sortie Squad, this is one version of the team. Like, you could put C-3PO on it like we talked about earlier. You could put, you could put like, L... Uh, not L, uh, IG-11 on this team. He can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, the BB-8 makes this team really, really fast with 40% extra turn meter. Sort of giving her whole squad, what, 70 speed? Or maybe that's just herself 70 speed and everyone else 35 speed. But one way or another, this team, uh, plus the speed and the 40% turn meter, this squad has some legs. It's very, very quick. Um... Some of the characters I don't actually have legs, they just have wheels, or in BB-8's case, he just has his body. So, there's that. Now, this is the one team I double-dipped on for offense and defense. On defense, you really want a short trooper. If you can put tenacity on short trooper, it can really, really frustrate people, especially trying to use Wampa. If you put grit, if you put the grit Datacron on them, remember to have Relic 5 plus on all of them. And honestly, with grit and 
the with some tenacity on short troopers so that you can't land a bunch of debuffs this team can be so obnoxious to kill on defense in fact i'm i'm kind of dreading facing it we'll have to see I'm, that's why i'm making plans like maybe my bam team is going to end up taking out aiden every time hopefully that's going to be the case otherwise yeah this team is going to be very tough very very tough to kill honestly on defense i, I think there's a good case for it to be on defense because Wampa won't kill it right away. Wampa won't just run it over uh, right away. I don't think. 3v3 he didn't. I'm guessing in 5v5 it'll be more of the same, but who knows. Wampa might get more get might get more hits back um, against against bad attackers. So there there is that. Um, okay, so Grand Inquisitor. So this team can be good on offense. I I think on defense I'm going to put it on for one more season, at least for most of this season. Uh, but this this team can do pretty well. I mean, put decent mods on them, make one of them really fast. Remember, Grand Inquisitor in 5v5 is going to make everyone uh, plus 50 speed, essentially. So he's going to give everyone on his team's 25 speed, and he's going to reduce his opponent's speed, all characters, by 25 as well, making everyone's uh, functional speed plus 50. So uh, they're all some of the fastest characters in the game, in fact. Ninth Sister is slower than the rest, Grand Inquisitor is a little slower than the rest, and then all of the other ones are the exact same speed, so you can kind of customize turn order if you want to. This is my personal favorite build right now. Eighth Brother is the odd man out. Not sure who we're going to remove. Probably Second Sister for the Reva once we finally get her, but that's the speculation that belongs elsewhere. This team can do well on offense, take out like General Scott. Skywalker and stuff. However, I think on defense, it still poses issues, especially if you have the cooldown reduction cron for this team, and as long as you can start getting them going, like, they're going to be able to ability block constantly, they're going to be able to do all their AoEs and their healing, it's it's going to be fairly obnoxious. The Adrad team on defense, folks, in 3v3, it is a serious problem. People die to it quite a bit, and... The problem is, all right, folks, I apologize for that slight hiccup there. Um, <laughs> the, the music, someone stole my Spotify. What the heck? Oh, so, <laughs> all right, this is Radis team. It does get countered a lot on defense, folks. Uh, there, there's a lot of different teams that can beat it at this point. And, uh, you know, General Grievous, Bounty Hunters, uh, Bad Batch, all sorts of things. The thing is, uh, this team still gets a decent amount of holds for me because uh, if you can limit people's options to the point that they're kind of desperate like if you can make it so that people can't beat wampa for or can't beat things with wampa on, on the team like a lot of times people are like man i really really want that 50 banner win with wampa uh, then they're gonna try something silly like against admiral radis here and radis will take down wampa like almost every time uh, if as long as you have them well modded and everything a lot of people are gonna have radis though Ad rad available because everyone's working on profundity or at least you should be working on profundity depending on where your account is but uh, profundity is a very important piece so a lot of people are going to have relic 9 they're going to have the omicron and you know they're going to have everyone relic k2 and bays you don't necessarily have to have them here bays does increase your win percentage by quite a bit and k2so is probably the next best thing to add to the team you can maybe get by with replacing one of these with like scarifable pathfinder I realize that Churret is a little bit scary on this team as well. You can maybe try to fit in Churret with Baze instead of K2. I do like this double tank version, however, because they both taunt different ways, and K2 has really nice synergy with your new fancy shiny Relic 8 Cassian. Now, finally, we have this Iden Killer Bam team, which, I mean, <laughs> I actually copied this last minute, actually, as well, as overlap from the three, from the offensive builds. This can, here's the thing, guys, this, this version, I don't have Boba, I don't have Django on any of my builds here, because, uh, I mean, they, they usually get swapped in, but you can, you can honestly take this team put it on defense, make Queel really fast, you could also put Django as lead to make them even faster and have Bam. The thing is, you want Queel to be the fastest on the team just so we can give everyone else turn meter, and then you want Bam to go next so that he gets into his poop stance. Once he does that, then everyone else does their AoEs, and once that happens, then he gets 20 stacks and he destroys someone, he just deletes someone, and... 
It's very fancy of him, very fancy of the whole team that, that makes it work. You can make this team ridiculously fast, in fact, folks. So, anyways, th this, this is just the, you know, a decent synopsis or whatever, overview of teams you could put on defense. You can put a lot of the teams from offense on there too. Just remember, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to stop? And how do, can you layer teams so that if they're countering one of your teams with something obvious, how can you make it so that they want that team really bad in the back but don't have it, and instead are forced to resort to something like Wampa to take out Radis and Prey. So I'm gonna call it good here, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.